Hey guys, I'm Pedram, surgical resident from Melbourne, and in this video series, we're discussing tips and tricks to help you pass the GSSE. In this revision tactics lecture, we're going to be going across how to use question banks during your revision time, uh, what to do when you come across unclear questions, how to perform ad hoc revision, how to practice your timing for the exam and for questions as well, and space repetition and where that all fits in. All right, let's get into it. Starting off by discussing question banks. So the GSSE question bank that you would have been using throughout your active study time can also be a really useful tool when it comes to your revision. Obviously going back over the questions that you've already done is going to help to cement the information in your head, which is effectively what space repetition is, which we'll touch on right at the very end as well. But just keep in mind that there aren't a great deal of questions that are repeated in the exam, or at least they weren't for me, uh, nor were there lots of questions that were repeated for my friends who've done other uh, GSSE exams. You'll find that due to the sheer number of questions that are actually available within the GSSE bank, repeating the bank doesn't force you to memorize answers, but rather helps to reiterate key concepts and ideas. Each time that you end up doing the bank, you'll find that you have a different area of weakness, and that's certainly what I found. So I probably ended up doing the bank around about four times, and each time I went through, I found out that there was a different area, whether it be anatomy, physiology, pathology, that I needed to focus on before I reattempted the bank, and I actually found that to be really, really helpful. You need to keep in mind that obviously the a uh, number of questions that are repeated on the exams aren't that many. Uh, so I didn't find that there were very many questions from the bank that were repeated on my exam, nor were there very many repeated, exam repeated questions for the exams that my friends have sat either. Ultimately, because the question bank questions have been taken from the exam, they are going to be your most reliable source of the types of questions that are going to come up and will remain as a really good revision tactic for you guys. Now, you can also go on and do other question banks or pay for other question banks. So I paid for Ace the Exam question bank, and you can see in the resources video what I thought about that. But overall, that was used as another uh, platform for me to just churn through thousands and thousands of questions so I get more comfortable both with timing, but also with the concepts that often come up in the GSSE. So if you have time and if you feel like you've been through the GSSE questions uh, uh, enough times, then you can look to another question bank to try and deepen your knowledge and get a little bit better with your MCQs as well. There is also another question bank by the name of, I believe, Primary Anatomy, uh, which obviously only focuses on the anatomy portion of the exam. Uh, I didn't end up going for this particular product because I didn't think anatomy was going to be where I was failing and nor do I think the majority of people would be failing on, on anatomy. So I would rather spend my time revising pathology and physiology and the concepts there uh, instead of trying to do a question bank that is just dedicated to anatomy. But if you feel that your anatomy is lacking, then primary anatomy may be a really good resource for you. Keep in mind that you don't really want to spread yourself too thin. So if you are signing up to multiple question banks, you're probably not going to be doing any one of them justice. So I would try to pick a question bank that you're going to do, perhaps outside of the GSSC question bank, and stick to that one. One of the tactics that I employed during my time studying for the GSSC was to create a Google document named Unclear Questions. And in this document, I would pop down whatever question I came across during my study where I didn't quite understand the answer. So either I didn't understand the concept of, or what the question was asking or why the answer was correct or why I was wrong. I found this to be particularly helpful because it helped me to identify my knowledge gaps. And what it would mean is that intermittently I would go back to this document and I would delve deeper into those particular topics and really try to nut out the concepts within the question and figure out why I was wrong or why my thought processes were wrong and try to figure out why that particular answer was correct. I also found this to be really helpful in starting discussions with friends who are also sitting in the GSSE because they, these kind of concepts or these kind of questions that you come across, often you're not the only one that's struggling with it. Or for example, the question may be poorly worded, so you need to try and figure out what the question is actually trying to ask you versus it's just a really difficult concept to grasp. So I would definitely recommend making an unclear questions document. Let's talk ad hoc revision. So the majority of the people that are gonna be sitting in the GSSE are gonna be working full-time jobs. That means a large proportion of your week is gonna be taken up by work, and so you need to try and figure out ways that you can incorporate revision or study into those times where you have a little bit of downtime. I found the best way to do this was to upload my notes and my study materials to a Google Drive or to a website server where you can access it remotely at any point in time. So 
for example, if I had a uh, if I had a locum shift where I had a little bit of downtime, then I would log into uh, my website or my Google Drive. I would download the notes that I was doing for that week, and I would just start revising uh, during that time. And I found that to be instrumental in ensuring that I got enough contact time with my notes for that spaced repetition benefit. If you're someone who takes public transport to work, then having those uh, resources available online is going to be fantastic for those train rides or those tram rides where you have a short period of time where you can go through a couple of questions or a couple of key concepts to really dial those in. With regards to timing and ensuring you can maintain a good pace when practicing questions, you need to keep in mind the number of questions that are going to be asked on the exam. So for example, for the part A or the first exam, which is the anatomy exam, it's 150 minutes for around about 80 questions. Now keep in mind those 80 questions, 60 of those 80 are going to be your true false, true false type question, which means that in reality, you're actually answering a lot more than just 80 questions. I've personally not had too much of a problem with timing on exams in the past because I find when I read a question I either have some knowledge about it and can attempt it or just it hits me completely out of the blue and I have no idea what's going on and I effectively just need to make an educated guess and move on. If you do struggle with timing then I think the best thing you can do for yourself is those uh, practice Julie Mundy exams. So Julie Mundy will provide you with uh, a benchmarked exam twice before your GSSE, one is three months out and one is three weeks out. And if you take them to be as serious as the real GSSE and you sit down without any extra distractions, without the internet so that you can try and look up questions or anything, you can really get a good idea of what the timing is like. Outside of that, the other thing that you can do is use those extra question banks such as AC exam, uh, set yourself a certain number of questions that you're gonna be studying and see how long it takes you to go through them all. Obviously, it's not as good of a uh, marker as, say, the Julie Mundy exams because when you press submit uh, for a particular question and it gives you the answer, you're going to spend some time reading it. But it will give you a bit of an idea of how long it takes you to do questions. It's probably not news to anybody that space repetition is a fantastic way to learn because it enhances retention and recall of information. Now, lots of people like to use Anki as a space repetition technique. I personally don't use Anki because I find that the time commitment for creating the cards is too high. I find that the time that I would have spent creating the Anki cards could be better spent doing things such as going through question bank questions again, re-watching YouTube videos which I found to be really helpful and those YouTube videos are often bookmark or put in, my, put in a particular playlist or just reading through my notes again. However, having said all this, all of these are just different forms of spaced repetition. So if Anki is your preferred method of spaced repetition, then go for it. All right, that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll be talking about game day tips. So tune in for that one. Thanks, guys.